Well, hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica Likewise. I'm a BCBA and I'm passionate about helping you crush your BCB exam. I know that when you enter the world of autism, ABA, you do so because you really, really want to make a difference in people's lives. And I know how exciting it is to work in a field you're passionate about. So I don't want that exam to stand in your way. So today we're going to talk about whole interval recording. First, we're going to define what it is. And second, we're going to look at a mock BCB exam question. So you can take a look at what a question may look like if you get one on your exam or whole interval recordings the answer. So let's get started. All right guys, and welcome back. Well, before we talk about whole interval recording, we have to talk about the types of different measurement. And there's really two. There's continuous measurement and discontinuous measurement. Continuous measurement means you're always measuring. And you're going to do things like rate, frequency, latency, IRT, duration. Those are all going to be your continuous measuring procedures. And then sometimes you use what's called discontinuous measurement procedures. Those are your interval procedures. Those are going to estimate a percentage of time that a person's engaging in a behavior. Now, there are three types of interval procedures. There's time sampling, there's whole interval recording, and partial interval recording. And all of them are used when a behavior does not have a clear beginning and end or when resources are limited. So in this video, we're going to dissect whole interval recording. So what is whole interval recording? Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to break a time period, like a class, for example, into smaller segments. So let's say you have a 60-minute class and you decide you're going to take data to see what percentage of time a person's sitting in a chair, well, you can't just do 60 seconds, right? 60 minutes. You're going to break it down into intervals. So the intervals, the larger the interval, the less accurate that the behavior is going to get, the data is going to be. And the smaller the interval, the more accurate the be the behavior data is going to be, but the more time consuming and difficult it is for someone who's taking data. So you especially want to be careful about the interval size you're choosing, especially in a classroom setting with an untrained observer. You don't want to make intervals too short for someone who's not trained in data collection. So when you're using whole interval recording, what you're going to do is you're going to take that interval and you're going to record whether or not a learner engages in the behavior for the entire interval. So let's say that the interval is 10 minutes long. The learner has to be engaging in the behavior that's in question for the entire 10 minutes. If they did it for nine minutes and 59 seconds, it does not count. So it has to be for that entire 10 minutes. That is whole interval recording. Now, when we think about it, right, what if someone is engaging in the behavior for nine minutes and 50 seconds? Well, they're not getting credit for it. Right, So that means that whole interval recording is actually going to underestimate a behavior because if they're sitting for nine minutes and 50 seconds or eight minutes or seven seconds or seven minutes or six minutes or four minutes or one minute or eight minutes, either way, they're getting zero percent for that interval. So that interval is going to reflect that they actually sat for zero percentage of time for that interval. That's why we say that whole interval recording or any interval recording actually estimates behavior and gives you an estimated percentage rather than an exact percentage of time. So when would we want to use a behavior procedure, a measurement procedure that underestimates behavior? That's when we're teaching new skills. So we're always going to be using whole interval recording for behaviors we want to increase, not behaviors we want to decrease, because we'd rather continue teaching something, even if a child does know it, than to stop teaching something that a child potentially wouldn't know. So I really hope that this helps you to get a better handle of what whole interval recording is. And let's look at a BCB exam question that will give you a example of what a question may look like on your exam. Now, I do want to just have a little sidebar. I super love that you guys are putting comments in the videos when you put your answers in. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. And I love when you tell me you like these videos. That's my reinforcement to keep making them for you. But YouTube doesn't like when you just put the letter in as your answer. So do me a favor and write out a full sentence with your answer or um, some comment about this video, a question, some sort of takeaway. So my account doesn't get banned for spamming uh, YouTube because they think that it's spam when everyone just types in one letter. Anyway, now that the housekeeping is out of the way, let's look at that question. Okay, guys, and I'll read it for you. It says FISA is a BCBA providing consultation to a teacher in a second grade classroom 
for a student who is struggling with staying in his seat during lessons. The teacher has 26 students in the classroom, but the child has a one-on-one -on -one aid. What would be the best measurement procedure that FISA should recommend to estimate the percentage of time that the student is seated during classroom lessons? A, whole interval recording, B, partial interval recording, C, time sampling, and D, rate. Now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to dissect this question with you. And I haven't been doing this, because, uh, but I'm going to start dissecting these questions with you. So if you're watching these videos from now on, we're going to go over the answer. The answer should be obvious. It's A, whole interval recording, right? That's the title of this video. That's what this video is about. But how would you know that if you were taking your exam? And I'm about to show you. It says right here, there's really two key things that we're going to be looking at. Number, well, three key things we're going to be looking at. Number one, it wants the percentage of time. That means that we cannot use a rate because a rate does not give us the percentage of time. So we're going to cross rate off. Now, we also know that we want to increase a behavior. We want to increase sitting in the seat, which means we're not going to use partial interval recording. Now, sometimes a key word for using time sampling is going to be that there's in a classroom and in a group setting that they're talking about the number of students in the classroom. That can potentially be a key word for using time sampling. And if you don't know what that is, we'll go over it in a future video. But then we have whole interval recording. So how do we know we're gonna choose whole interval recording between time sampling? Because you really could use both here and have valid arguments for both. It actually tells us here that the child has a one-to-one -one aid, right? So what this tells us is that there is somebody who can take data and focus just on the child, which tells us that whole interval recording is actually our best answer here. So I really hope that it helped you that I went over that question and told you how to get the answer. So if it was helpful, please just put a comment in the chat below. I really appreciate those comments. So please, that is my reinforcement for making these videos. I don't get paid for them. So drop that video, that comment in this video. It will make me very, very happy. Please just don't put A because YouTube doesn't like that. So if you found this video helpful, you'll find some of my other study materials helpful. So head over to my website, Hope Education services.com. There is a tab that has a store. If you go under BCBA exam prep, I have a lot of amazing resources under there. I have an experimental design intensive. I have, a, um, there's a measurement intensive where we're going to go over all this stuff. There's an assessment in uh, intensive. And then there's also our fifth edition task list that I partnered with Dr. Katie May of ABA Mindset to put out together. Between all of those things, you're gonna get everything you need to know to absolutely crush this exam. So subscribe to this channel. I put videos out just like this one all the time. And it makes me so very happy. I get an email every time someone subscribes and it brightens my day. So please, please, please do that. And I hope to see you on the next video.